Welcome everybody. So this evening we've got something special. We've got a double header. I talked about it last night and uh, if you don't mind the winds are blowing pretty hard out there. We have a pretty good storm coming in off of the Pacific and this is the thing that's been dropping rain like crazy up in the gold country and Route 49 and along here in the coastal mountains. Redepositing gold like crazy. We've talked about that. That's in the 2020 you know product and you know how gold rearranges itself in storms and water flow. How you can see where it might hide. But tonight we're going to talk about government gold maps related material. How you can start finding gold by knowing where to start looking. One of the first things I do is I begin by looking in in areas near me or in areas of interest that I'm going to be traveling in such as different states or different countries. And one of the first research products you can go after is how to you know map these things is uh, I have this GGM thing and it shows you directly how to custom make these maps. So I'm not going to go into that tonight. I'm just going to show you a quick overview of northern and southern Carolinas and how that relates. There's a little bit of, you know, kind of off into Georgia, but that's that's in another video. Uh, you can look around on Facebook or on YouTube and find that. Uh, but right now, today, we're going to take a tour of South Carolina and then on up into North Carolina. And we're going to talk about the gold and how it got there. Very interesting stuff. So uh, let's take a look at this picture. I've got, uh, you know, the picture that I'm going to be showing you is this image of Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. And what we're really looking for here is how does this gold band, how did it get to be where it is and what does it represent? You know, one of the first gold rushes in the United States was in this region. And there's a reason for that. There's a lot of gold here. Yeah, it's kind of old gold, but we're talking 1700s era findings as opposed to 1800s. So this is very important to recognize that you've got gold on both the East Coast and the West Coast, and it's accessible pretty much to anybody in the continental United States if you go visit some of these places and you can get access to claims. So it's important to take a look. Uh, it's also important to know kind of where the mines are and what you can look for, what kind of material. So I'll be talking about that a little bit. I have uh, discussed Georgia already in a different video. So we'll kind of leave that out for tonight. Let me turn off Georgia. Huh, that's a funny way of saying it. So that we can zero in on the Carolinas and specifically North and South Carolina and where the gold is hidden there. Uh, notice this pattern. You saw it coming up from below Atlanta and then on up across this region right here. This is a gold belt on the East Coast. It's along in the Appalachians. Now the Appalachians were once great mountains and had lots of intrusive volcanic and hydrothermal activity, uh, has since long since eroded down into hills and valleys. This is what will eventually happen with things like the Sierra Nevada once it settles down. But at this point, this area is pretty dormant in terms of its orogenic activity that has to do with mountain building and, and the or bodies that get injected and all that good stuff. But the reality is what you're looking for is just this kind of situation where it's eroded down into those big loads and there are still placer deposits for you to find. Once you find those placer deposits behind them upstream uphill, you're gonna find the load sources that went into that. Now, some of those have already been exposed and that's what we'll talk a little bit about tonight. But for right now, let's just focus on one of these states at a time. So let's give a shot at South Carolina first. I'll take North Carolina and switch it off for the time being. And we'll go into uh, the MRDS here. And let's see. Turn that off. The more you have of these states turned on at the same time, the more it overloads the computer and makes it really kind of hard to show things. So we want South Carolina. We don't want North Carolina's gold to show at this point. Now I custom colored those. I teach that in the in the in the video that I have for training. But what what you're able to do is now you can focus in on the pattern of those gold prospects and where they largely occur. You can see a number of them, you know, shooting through this band right through here. Anytime you see one of these things that's marked with an X, typically what you're going to find is buried under here is is an occurrence so it's an operation type is unknown or it's an occurrence somebody's 
claimed it or marked it. They've pulled out an ore that contained gold. The primary gold uh, content was gold, uh, but not necessarily much information about it is in existence. Now, some of this occurs because of how far back it was found. You know, some of these things are before, you know, county records and things like that even existed. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Anytime you're looking at older mines, the information is kind of sparse. So you typically want to take what you see with a grain of salt and you also want to kind of integrate it. I've talked about this before. You add it together with all these other mines that are in the area to get a feel for where the zones are. Notice how these are all clustered together. These are all clustered together. These are clustered together. There are pockets that have formed. These are probably areas in the past that have had secondary hydrothermal deposits or primary ore deposits that went into these regions and, and left behind something that was eroded out and this is where the erosion leaves these final placer deposits or in the case of this case uh, these are saying that it's unknown type so we don't know whether it's a load or a placer if we go in and look let me see if i can find one of these things a little closer here Here we go, surface. So this one is a placer deposit. Anytime it says surface, it's placer. And we can go drill down into it and pull those records up like we talked about before. And we can see the specifics of it. So it's in South Carolina. The county name is Anderson County. It's a surface or placer deposit. Uh, it's a prospect, which means it's not a, it's not a continuing operational mine and it's not necessarily anything more than just a, an occurrence, but it is definitely something of interest to us so what we're looking for is this kind of uh, structure and this kind of mining operation from past history again going across these sections we can see there's this trend from the southeast to the north i mean from the southwest to the northeast southwest to northeast that's the way this whole band goes on the east coast and again most of it is north of columbia and kind of west uh, toward greenville here Spartanburg, uh, Cross Anchor, uh, here we go past producer, uh, gold, doesn't say what the thing was. Again, you know, you don't really know, but a lot of these are placer. There are gold load mines in the area. There are even a couple of them that are still operational, but they're typically operational for tourism purposes and not for uh, any kind of production. Some of them have considered going back into production with gold prices where they are. That's always kind of fascinating. But this is an interesting area in its own right. As we close in and tighten in on this, one of the other things you can do is begin to look at the topology here. Let me see if I can get this thing to behave for us. But we can see close up a lot of flat land and some hills and mountains to the north and west and so we start getting into more of the Appalachian region and things like that and things get kind of interesting at that point that's where a lot of these things are clustered kind of losing track of where you're going Jess there we go so now we have uh, Lake Kiwi and I don't think we've got well look at that we got a prospect right underneath the lake Whitewater Toxaway Placer. That's a strange name, Toxaway. I don't think I'd name a gold prospect in this day and age, Tox, anything. <laughs> That's likely to get it shut down in a hurry. But uh, it was a ore of gold and the commodity was gold. Again, uh, lots of information in terms of location, not so much about the quality of what's here. Uh, when you go out west, because of the newer uh, information base and the USGS database and what it contains, you can find more information. So that's it for uh, South Carolina for right now. What I'm going to do is cut this video right here, and we'll jump to North Carolina in another session on the same night. We'll do a double header. And so join me in a second on Facebook. I'll be back. This way we have two videos that people can go to for different purposes. Okay, so uh, join me in a second. I'll be back. Prospector Jess. And again, uh, you know, you can get this stuff. Uh, the government gold maps shows you how to create these maps and how to, you know, plot them out. Be aware that you can um, 
kind of pretty much do what you want to with them. In terms of customizations, I talk about that, how to color them, how to change the, you know, the different fonts and things like that. It's really important to you know, kind of get a feel for the area first, so simply play with the map, than it is to color them up. It's sort of like writing a book. You, know, you really want to write the content first because that's the important part, and then do all the formatting after you're done. And the purpose of this is to give you a chance to find where gold is near you. That's the whole thing about government gold maps and it, what it pushes. Why do I push that first? Because that's the most common question people have asked me is, where is there gold near me? Where is there gold in my state? This is how you'll know. I'll be back in a minute, Prospector Jess. Hang on, join me in a second. I'm back. So we're gonna pick up uh, North Carolina this time. Uh, I wanted to kind of touch base with you. I'm just splitting that up so it's easier for people to you know, find it. Uh, that's one of the things that both YouTube and Facebook do is they allow you to search for subjects like where is gold in North Carolina? And I wanted to make sure that people could find it. I'll be kind of re-identifying the previous version to be South Carolina. Um, but it again talks about that same subject which is the area between the two states. Uh, let me go back to our full screen. Let's uh, look at this region in South Carolina. Uh, let's see, uh, we were talking North Carolina. We were we were on South Carolina. Uh, that's where we've been visiting just now. And so now we're going to switch to North Carolina. So let me turn off South and turn on the gold in northern north carolina it's kind of colored blue did that by customization and let's turn on the border so there's north carolina and let's zoom in a little bit not too much a little bit come on we're doing that so now what we have is this picture of North Carolina and again it follows this same trend going from the southwest to the northeast heading on its way through Washington DC and Baltimore give you a hint uh, this band is pretty pretty broad and there were prospects they were found even in Baltimore <laughs> pretty amazing um, so uh, this was a powerhouse of wealth that was behind some of the Civil War and how the North really wanted to obtain these mines because it really was important to the economy of America. And the South wanted to hold the mines because, of course, it was important to their future. And so what happened here is some of what was fought in the Civil War wasn't just about slavery and liberation and freedom. It was also about gold and wealth. So it's just an important piece of history that you ought to be aware of. So looking at these mines, you can see readily, uh, in this case, we have a handful of them with the pick and shovel pointing down. So let's poke, poke at them and open them up. So this is an underground. Now we're talking a load mine. In a load mine, it says it was just an occurrence of gold, but somebody was probably doing some kind of adit or a side shaft or a vertical shaft into the ground, just sampling a load that they had found doesn't indicate that they had found much. What we can do to find out if there's any more information about that is pull up the record and you look and typically they'll tell you whether there was a significant amount of gold found or not. In this case, it doesn't indicate either, anything. It doesn't indicate whether it's significant or just a minor amount. So that's important to kind of poke at when you do these things. Um, let's take a look over here. Um, Again, all of this is covered in government gold maps. Uh, you can see the thing below. And if you got any questions about your state or any questions about this stuff, feel free to comment below and like and share this with your friends. I, I love you to do that. Uh, it gets the word out and it also helps people answer their own questions. Uh, one of the reasons I do it this way and do the training the way I do is because I can't answer all the possible questions you could come up with but you can start to yourself. And that's probably, you know, it's teach a man to fish, right? And he'll be, you know, fed forever. If you just give him a fish, you know, he's got a snack and that's it. So I'm gonna teach you to fish for gold. Past producer, unknown, gold, low sulfide, gold, quartz vein. Now, what does that mean? Well, low sulfide typically means 
This is a formation that contains some pyrites, probably chalcopyrite, gold, copper, and sulfur, and iron. And, and so what happens is that gold is significant enough that they can roast the gold out. It may be. It may not be. That's one of the problems with sulfide ores is they become what's called refractory. They have to be fried at a very high temperature, which is not cost effective if the price of gold is very low. It's also tends to emit all kinds of, you know, ecological problems because it emits fumes that are loaded with copper and other uh, toxic heavy metals. And so it's just not good for the local area. Um, best to handle this kind of ore by having somebody who does this thing professionally handle it with the right chemistry and the right process so that it's ecologically sound and efficient enough to get your gold back with a good profit margin. So uh, let's take a look at this thing. Um, so again, uh, we look at this mine and we see North Carolina, ah, we have a hydrothermal vein. Remember we talked about low sulfide? So this was a secondary thermal deposit like we've talked about in the previous video. And it is injecting the gold with quartz in a vein. That's a load. That also means somewhere in the region there's likely to be some placer deposits from the erosion of this quartz vein over time. Remember this mountain system in the Appalachians and the East Coast has been crushing and crunching all the water through there. You get hurricanes every year or every other year that are 100 year storm equivalent and send rushing flooding waters down through these gorges and valleys ripping loose all of the soils and sediments and tearing loose boulders and cobbles, quartz vein chunks and crushing the gold out. All that equals placer deposit. So keep your eyes out for the placer load that comes through in the fine and coarse golds that go with it, as well as nuggets. So now most folks who look in these areas only find coarse gold grains. A lot of the nuggets are gone. And part of that's because this thing is eroded for so long. And part of it's because it's an older deposit area and it's been picked through by an awful lot of people. So uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be some new stuff revealed when you get these big storms like the last couple of hurricanes we had this year. So uh, just important to keep in mind. So that's where we are with this. This is North Carolina. And as I said, you know, along the coast, there isn't so much gold. It's inland toward the hills and mountains. So make yourself a weekend vacation trip and head for the hills and get some gold. Prospector Jess, so we're not. Just thought I'd throw you a, a North Carolina and a South Carolina variant in a double header tonight. Uh, go check the North Carolina version. It's in another video. And uh, I welcome you to contact us at Hunting for Gold. <clears throat> Request contacts at huntingforgold.com. Send me an email or comment below and like and share this thing all over the place. Let your friends know or people who are watching Gold Rush Alaska and don't know anything about gold. Have them come and visit. We're going to have fun learning this stuff, and you're going to know more than they do before very long. Thanks a lot. Good prospecting. Prospector Jess, over and out.